Welcome to the supplier training video for conflict minerals declarations in Green Data Exchange, or GDX. This video will cover the steps needed to create a conflict minerals declaration in GDX in order to share your conflict status and ongoing due diligence efforts with your customers. After logging in to your free supplier account, select the Declarations tab. Here you will find a blank conflict minerals declaration. To begin entering data, click the Declare button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The first piece of information you will need to enter relates to the scope of your declaration. The scope of your declaration indicates to your customers what is being covered by this particular declaration. The relevant scopes are company scope, which covers all parts from a specific company, division level scope, which covers all parts produced by a specific division of your company, product category scope that covers a product type or product family, such as all capacitors or 301 family connectors. Finally, there is a part level scope that covers only the individual parts that are specified in the declaration. A summary of these scopes are available in our on-screen instructions area to the right. These instructions will change as you advance to different stages of your declaration. If you are declaring at the company scope level, no further scope detail is needed. Simply hit Next to advance to the next area to input mineral use data. If you are declaring at any other scope, you will need to provide further scope detail. For a division level, this detail is the division name. For a product category level, you will need to indicate which product types or families are covered by the declaration. For specific parts, you can also provide this detail. For example, parts sold to your customer. More importantly, you will also have to upload your parts list. For the scope name, write in the data required for your selected scope. For example, the division name the product category name, or the parts that you may be declaring for a specific customer. The scope description can be any sort of unique identifier to help organize your declarations. For example, the date of the declaration. If you are declaring at a specific part level, click Next Scope Detail to select and upload a parts list. If you are not declaring at the specific part level, simply click Next to enter data on mineral use. To upload a part list, you will need to use a Microsoft Excel 1997-2003 XLS file with the following column information on manufacturer part number, description if available, and customer name if the part is built to spec. An example is seen here. When ready, click Select a File above and select the part list. Click Upload. After the upload is complete, you will see the manufacturer part number and description below. For the part list, you are able to specify parts that are already in GDX or new parts that are yet to be created. Click Next to go to Mineral Use Questions. On the Mineral Use page, you will provide answers to whether or not the parts covered by the scope of your declaration contain tin, tantalum, tungsten, or gold. Please indicate presence for each of these materials by selecting either Yes or No. To switch from one mineral to the next, hit Next Mineral, or click the mineral name at the top of the screen. Once you have entered this data, click Next in order to declare the status of your Country of Origin Inquiry. In the Country of Origin Inquiry area, please indicate whether or not you have completed a reasonable inquiry into the Country of Origin of the minerals you have just declared as being present in your product. If your inquiry has been completed, click Next to go to the Mineral Origin page. If you have not heard from all of your suppliers of these minerals, your inquiry is not completed. For inquiries that have not been completed, when you hit Next, you will be prompted to enter answers to corporate policy questions, and your conflict mineral status in GDX will be considered pending until you are able to update the declaration 
with a completed country of origin inquiry. In the mineral origin area, you will provide source detail on the minerals which were declared present in your parts. Please identify the source of each mineral by selecting whether it is from a scrap or recycled source, an undeterminable source, or if it's from a smelter source. If you have selected smelter, please indicate the correct smelter or smelters based upon the drop-down list. Please complete this source information for all minerals. To change minerals, simply click Next Mineral or the mineral name at the top of the page. Click Next when you've entered this data to go to the Declaration Status area. The Declaration Status area is where you will enter your conflict mineral status. Your options are Not Conflict Free if you have determined that your mineral sources of tin, tantalum, tungsten, or gold originate from the conflict area. Conflict free, if you have verified all sources of these minerals do not source from the conflict area. Or undeterminable, if you are not able to determine the conflict status. Once you have selected the appropriate status, click Next to provide evidence documentation. If any of the minerals are used in your products, you are required to provide documentation that details how you arrived at your status. In this area, you are able to provide a country of origin document, a conflict minerals report, and a conflict minerals report audit. The latter two document types will largely not be available until after May 31, 2014. Once you have uploaded the documentation, it will appear below. Please note that you are able to remove this documentation if it becomes out of date and you are updating your status. After you have loaded the documentation, click Next to answer the corporate policy questions. The corporate policy questions allow you to provide answers and comments regarding your company's actions and efforts related to conflict minerals. While most of these are yes-no questions, some have alternative answers. Please review these questions, provide answers, and provide comments as you feel appropriate, such as a link to the public policy on your company's website. Click Next when you have completed answering the questions in order to provide any additional comments related to your declaration. The last area before your declaration is completed is the comments section. While this area is optional, Many suppliers have found it helpful to communicate corporate policy, conflict-free compliance timelines, and other similar information to their customers. By either populating this information directly into the comment field or uploading a document, you are able to share any other information that is relevant to your conflict minerals efforts. Click Next when you are done to finalize your declaration. This last page is a summary of what you have just declared. Not only does this allow you to review your own responses, but this also demonstrates exactly what your customers are able to view. As with all declarations in GDX, this declaration can be shared with multiple customers. If you ever need to update this declaration, hit Declare to be able to edit your responses or to create a new declaration. If you wish to remove this declaration, simply click delete. Thank you for watching this supplier training video. Please check our website shown on screen for a summary of the instructions covered by this video. If you have any feedback, requests, or questions, please contact us through the information on our website seen here.